Did you know that one out of every three to four mouthfuls of food that you take each day is due to the help of a pollinator? Yes, that's right. Native pollinators such as bees, birds, and even butterflies and hummingbirds are all a part of our ecosystem where they're able to take pollen from one flower and transfer it to the next in order for cross-pollination to occur in order for us to have those wonderful fruits and vegetables that we have at home each day so Pollinators are important for the production of many flowering plants that were able to have apples and blueberries, even cucumbers, pumpkins, and even a lot of our squashes coming in this summer. And just to show you how important native pollinators are to our environment, a Cornell University study showed that crops pollinated by honeybees and other insect pollinators contributed to over $29 billion to the farm income in just 2010. Man, that's such a big number for a small insect like our bees and butterflies and even hummingbirds. So, even though that that's a big number, sadly our pollination numbers are slowly, population numbers are going down each day due to loss of habitat and decline of a lot of plants that they have. So, today I'm going to talk about some different plants to actually incorporate into your garden and landscape to help bring up some of those native pollinator numbers. Again, my name is Kristen Hildebrand and I'm with the Warren County Cooperative Extension Service serving as the horticulture agent. Now, if you're interested in attracting those wonderful butterflies for the summer we've got a lot of great plants that you might want to consider now with butterflies they go through a complete metamorphosis that's the life cycle that they go through so we go through an egg we go through the larvae known as the caterpillar stage then they pupate form their actual cocoon and then come into that wonderful adult butterfly that we see. So it's really important to provide different plants according to those different stages of their life cycle. Now, I know a bunch of you all probably recognize this one. This one is common milkweed. Milkweed you see very much so in a lot of hay and pasture fields. This one has a more white bloom to it, but some of the newer varieties of milkweed can have other colors of bloom, such as really bright orange, and also maybe even some yellows and even reds. But this one is one that's great for attracting the monarch butterfly and so really what happens is that the adult butterfly will lay her eggs around the base of the plant and they can feed off of the leaves and actually uh, you know develop more into the adult later on in life so definitely check out a lot of different milkweed for your garden next we have a shrub that you might want to consider as well this one's known as button bush this one's one of my favorites it likes a lot of wetlands but this one's going to give you some nice bloom time from June all the way to September and this one has a nice kind of more of a buttony type look to it and it looks like almost even a white ball but it's still very very attractive to a lot of different butterflies now we can't go out without saying that asters are perfect for even attracting more butterflies as well this one that we have today is more of a purple bloom with more of a yellow center it's really attractive especially throughout the summer to give you plenty of bloom time and also a lot of pollen and nectar for where those butterflies. Another one that we have that's also purple in color is our blazing star or known scientifically as liatris. This one's going to get really tall so you might want to stake it in your garden just to help support the blooms but again it's really really nice and it's able for those butterflies to kind of feel around with their feet in order for to take up some of their nectar. So liatris not only do you can have uh, liatris in the garden, but you might even want to consider purple coneflower. This one's really interesting in the fact that it is native to Kentucky. And so when you're looking at different plants for attracting butterflies, you might want to look more to the native plants. This one is again, purple in color. So whenever you're looking at different plants, you definitely want to make sure that you plant masses of color. So that way that those pollinators are able to see that really easily and again, they don't don't have to go very very far to get the pollen and nectar that they need to kind of soup up. Now once you've got some different uh, plants planted you may want to take a look at a water supply or even a water source. It's really important to provide clean 
water for those pollinators and the way that I've done that today to show you is I've taken a shallow container and you can use any kind of container uh, but mine is clear in color and what I've done is I filled it up with some different rocks and so after you fill it up with rocks fill it just a little bit with water and then provide it around some of your plants and that way they've got a source for clean drinking water and again the rocks just help them from not drowning in that so definitely put that next to some of your plants and not only if you are enjoying butterflies in your garden you can't forget about our wonderful hummingbirds hummingbirds like more tubular shaped uh, flower blooms and also they love the color red so I really enjoy watching them this summer uh, one of the native plants that we have is cardinal flower this one is a really really nice native plant to Kentucky it's going to give you some bloom time whenever those wonderful hummingbirds come out and really they start coming or migrating over into Kentucky about April and you want to be able to provide as much bloom as possible and you might even want to look to some red coneflower not only for attracting the hummingbirds but also even your butterflies. Now these are just a couple of plants that you can incorporate into your garden and landscape. Not only do you want to do that you may want to check out and register your actual pollinator garden online with the national campaign that we have going on called the Million Pollinator Garden Challenge and again this is is just a challenge that they have that's national wide. All you have to do is just register your pollinator garden online by visiting million pollinatorgarden.org and again you'll be considered in that national uh, garden campaign to help bring up our native pollinators. So these are just some plants that you might want to look at. Not only do you want to look at plants, you might want to take pick up a couple of seed packets on attracting more native pollinators to your garden and I believe Janet Turley, our 4-H agent, is going to talk to you a little bit about involving the kids with uh, starting seeds at home, maybe even taking a look at some pollinator seed packets. And if you'd like more information about attracting maybe hummingbirds or butterflies to your garden, stop by your local cooperative extension service and pick up our publications on attracting butterflies and hummingbirds to your garden. Again, my name is Kristen Hildebrand with the Warren County Cooperative Extension Service as a horticulture agent, and we want to wish you a happy gardening season this 2017.